Hi, Lori. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Hey, how's it going? It's going great. How are you? It's great seeing you. You too. You're so That's much so fun to watch online, but it's even better being with you in person. Oh, thanks so much. That means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, girl, I discovered you because of your podcast. Oh, thank you. I love it. So, why don't we tell everybody a little bit about you because maybe they don't already know who you are. Okay, great. So my name is Lori J on Instagram and Twitter. My real name is Lori Hall. And I am the head of marketing for a television network called TV One. And I'm also the host and creator of 38 and Dating. I love it. And <laughs> I got into 38 and Dating because I realized that dating at 38 is a lot different than dating at 28, especially when it comes to things like fertility. Right. So what happens when you turn 39? Girl, you know what? It's still going to be 38 and Dating. <laughs> I actually turned 39 in January, but I'm still keeping it 38 and dating. Okay, it's got it. You're 38, forever 38. Forever, right? <laughs> Memorialized. Love it. <laughs> so when did you freeze your eggs? Oh, my gosh. So I started this, I want to say, in November 2018, and that was my first cycle, and I'm currently on my third cycle right now. Oh, great. Wow. I did it multiple times, too. It's smart. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the doctor wants me to get to 30 eggs because of my age. Yeah. So apparently at 38 or beyond, they hope that you get 30 eggs, 25 to 30, so that you can have about a 65 to 70% chance of having at least one uh, biological child. Right. right. Yeah. It gives you better odds. <laughs> yeah. And uh, better security. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what I wanted. I needed breathing room. Right. right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I have about 30 eggs, too. So oh, um, how many are you up to so far? So 12. And that's been the craziest part because, you know, you don't really know how to set your expectations. And get right. And so when I did the first round, I had, I think, 14 extracted, but only seven were viable. And then the second time I was like, oh, maybe I'll get seven again. No, I had 15 extracted and only five viable. So I'm up to 12. So I'm trying to get to 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great goal. I, yeah. I think everyone should kind of have that goal if, if they're taking egg freezing seriously at least absolutely i Do mean you when wish... you're younger you can have fewer eggs so you can have like 20 but you know right. some of my friends froze 20 i'm at 30 or trying to get 30 right well do you wish you started this sooner absolutely absolutely so how did you learn about it so it's interesting one of my good girlfriends she actually did it and she didn't tell us about it for the longest time i guess she wow. felt like embarrassed or shy or like it's one of those things you do that's kind of done in, in the dark right she didn't even tell her boyfriend about it and they've been together like 10 years oh my gosh <laughs> right i was like what's going on so when she talked to me about it i was like huh did it hurt you know what was it like how much did it cost and i was hesitant to do it myself because i thought oh if god wanted me to have a child then i'll have a child I don't you know what? Worry. I hear that all the time, that exact same phrase. Yeah. And it's so crazy because then I said to myself, I was like, you know what? Maybe God actually does want me to have a child, but he's giving me these doctors and this technology and this science to enable me to have one later. Yeah, so, I like that. I like that mentality. Like, the yeah. science exists. We might as well use it and take advantage of it, right? Exactly. It's like when um, the person, they have this old fable where it's like there was a guy who was trying to walk on water and he started to sink. And then there was a helicopter that came. He's like, no, 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 God's going to save me. <laughs> then there was a boat that came. He's like, no, 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 God's going to save me. And then all of a sudden he drowned. And so then he gets to heaven. He's like, God, why didn't you save me? He's like, I sent you a helicopter, a boat. <laughs> He's like, I tried myself. He's like, but you didn't take it. So you know what? We have to time. see. We have to see these parables are true in real life. Absolutely. You got to recognize the signs. Right. I love it. So yeah. how, okay. So like people can listen to the podcast and learn more about your dating, but how about you give us a quick synopsis of what's happening right now? Yeah. So when I actually started my podcast, I was starting to date my now boyfriend. So, um, I was like, Hey, are you okay with me doing this podcast about all my crazy dating stories? And of course he's so supportive and so amazing. Um, but it's interesting because right when I started dating him, I did the podcast and then all of a sudden I'm like, and so I'm freezing my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's very odd but I did listen to this one other podcast by a woman named Miley Teal and she talked about her egg freezing experience and it was actually um, she didn't get a lot of eggs or got like zero or something she had like a zero percent chance but then met her partner and then got pregnant with him shortly oh, after that's a so great now she has story a baby. well there's yeah. lots of different ways to parenthood you know, yes. and that's what's great. But if you want to be a biological parent and you really feel passionate about like that, which I do. So that's yes. why, like, I took egg freezing so seriously and turned into a multi-freezer like yourself. Absolutely. Um, that, uh, you know, egg freezing is the best way to even the playing field between men and women. Yeah. 
I've even become kind of an advocate for it with younger yeah. women. Like I've told all my friends, I'm like, look, if you can afford it or, you know, if your insurance covers it, what have you, do it and do it earlier. Because what I didn't realize when I started freezing or even before I decided to freeze is once you freeze your eggs, your eggs will always be the age at which you froze them. I know. Isn't that awesome? I, was like, I love it. That the market that's, market? that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that is like, that is like the true forever young. Yes. I'm like, I'm a marketer. I would leave with that. Like have forever 30 year old eggs and you would be good to go. You know, like that would be my headline. Um, I love it. Now I tell every woman, I'm like, Hey, if you want the option to have kids one day, I'm not saying that you definitely need to use your eggs one day, but if you just want to have the option and it's affordable to you do it, there is no downside to me really to do it. I know some people have negative reactions to the medicine or they might be overstimulated, but mm-hmm. I feel like those instances are rare and it's at least worth the shot of trying to just keep the option. I always tell my friends, preserve the option. Right. So how did you find your clinic? So um, there was a girl that I met who decided at 40 years old that she wanted to have her own biological baby, doesn't have a boyfriend, but she's going to pursue a sperm donor. And she went to Shady Grove Fertility Clinic. Yeah. So when I Googled it, Shady Grove was like the top um, site that popped up. So then I looked it up. I went to the doctor for the ovarian reserve testing, which is like your initial test, as you know. Right. And I love the facility. I was like, they mm-hmm. seem like the preeminent one. They had a lot of um, information and education online about yeah. all of the egg freezing things. So I did a webinar. And then after the webinar, I was like, you know what? I think this might be the right thing for me. Yeah, it was the right fit. Nice. And then how about the hormones and meds? Did you feel like that was as challenging? Oh, my God. Did I feel like it was what? Challenging or that it was like what you thought it was going to be? Was it scary after that first shot? Like. Look, even after I'd signed up, even after they had, like, shipped me all my meds and all my, you know, needles and everything, I was like, look, I'm petrified of needles. I was like, this isn't a real deal until I give myself my first shot. Like, I was literally willing to back out of it even up until the first shot. So wait, how did your first shot go? It went really well because it was the follow stem. So the very yeah. first, you know, pin or whatever it's is easy. like the teeniest microscopic pin. I was like, so, but I was hyperventilating before I did it. I was like, okay, okay, got to do it. And yeah, so, it doesn't feel natural to shoot yourself in the stomach with a needle. Like, I haven't had a it shot feels since like 16. pain. Yeah, yeah, I avoid shots. I haven't had a shot since I was 16 years old and I'm 39. Yeah. So, that's how much I hate needles. So I did that one. It wasn't so bad. I mean, my boyfriend went to the injection classes with me. He was wow. such a great support. But at the end of the day, it's me at home, you know, yeah. pinching my fatty stomach tissue, trying to, like, figure trying out how to spot. do that. Yeah, yeah. So did you right switch or, left to right? I did because I actually started to bruise sometimes. Like, So yeah. you don't know kind of, like, where you're shooting. But uh, when I shot one time, I saw a little bit of blood come out. So then there was, like, a little bruise underneath. And it wasn't painful. It just yeah. looked bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I need to probably switch it up. Probably not like, you know, swimming suit, bikini weather uh, yes. look. Yeah. It's not like, a great look. Because I, I love it. It goes like, away, though. Your, exactly. Your Instagram, it shows so many, you know, great tips and things like that. So I think I want to document the actual injection process in this next yeah, phase. Yeah, you, know? you totally should. I love that idea. I want more people <laughs> to talk about it because then it just validates our choice even more. And it also shows and documents how like this doesn't have to be something we're ashamed of it can be something we're really proud and add it to our resume instead of it being absolutely you're desperate it's really interesting because the shame is a big thing right like and i didn't realize how much so but even before i talked about it on my podcast i was like should i oh wow literally i was like and you're really public i mean you're in the tvi you're yes Exactly. And then I wondered about whether I was going to tell my boss at work about oh, it. Yeah. And I didn't for the first two cycles. But now I'm like, you know what? It's easier if you just understand why I'm going to the doctor so much, why right. I can't tell you when I'm going to be out for my procedure until yeah. two days before. Right. You know, she's so supportive. So I'm glad I have a, a woman boss who's supportive. But um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to tell anybody. I, you know what? I didn't podcast. think I was going to either. My first cycle, I, I kept very close to the ch- cards, close to the chest, because I didn't know how the cycle was going to go. Was it going to get canceled? Right. Was there going to be a monster follicle where things going to work out? Or did, I have enough, right. did I have enough follicles to even start? So have you ever checked into like benefits at work? Yes. So I was, I am very lucky. Not was, I am very lucky. My insurance covers everything. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you should do it even more. <laughs> well, that's why I'm like, let's keep going. We're on cycle three, cycle four. And I get that it's because they cover it. So everybody's yeah. not as fortunate. But um, when I first started, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And so I was freaking out because I was like, how am I going to pay for this? Yeah. And then it became, 
do I really want to take out a loan? Because I was like, the loan's the, the loan's the only way. But do I want to take out a loan for something that's not going to be a sure thing? Because yeah. you can freeze your eggs. It doesn't mean that they're all going to be viable or that you'll actually have a baby. Yeah, it's it's all about. It's different than like Botox or microblading right. or like um, like even a boob job. Result. Yeah, you see the result instantly, and and this is a delay, and we don't, you know, there's a lot of statistics out there of how your body, and you haven't picked the sperm factor, so right. the sperm factor might be a deterrent in the embryo creation too. Absolutely, and you never know. And so then I started to think about, well, can I take out a loan with my credit card company? Can I take mm-hmm. it a loan with this? And honestly, I give all praises to women who are having to finance it on their own, or even you know finance any part of it because it is expensive. It yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. But I so. think it's less expensive than trying to have a baby in your forties with a partner because now you waited because that's how long right. it took to meet the right person that is your parenting yes. partner. I know. I think one of the things that really um, also struck home with me is that I remember seeing a video of this woman named Aisha Tyler, who's a comedian, talk show host, all this. And she and her husband were trying to have a baby. And I think she was like 40, 42. And she was absolutely heartbroken Mm. on the air and was bawling because she talked about how she always assumed she could just have a child when she was ready. And then when they're ready and she found the love of her life and they're married, she couldn't have one and she'd gone through all the testing all the tries all the ivf processes and it was and she said the doctors told me it was virtually impossible and she's like and i have a 0.001 or whatever she said chance and she was heartbroken and somebody said well what about adoption she's and she said it's too raw right now yeah yeah and i feel like that's the first statement everyone wants to say is what about adoption a lot of people don't even know that there's embryo adoption you know like you can still carry i think the celebrity mindset gives us a paints a picture that isn't true because you know because they're celebrities they don't have to open up about every little detail i mean or we don't even know how they conceived right Right. and so it's misleading because we're seeing celebrities at that level have babies but Praise, you know, like people like Kim Kardashian who are really honest about like the surrogacy factor and how she can't carry and medical reasons and things that might come up that it takes away some of that uh, shaming or like, you know, um, uh, Baldwin, what's her first name? Hillary Baldwin. She had, she had a miscarriage just recently, you know, and talking about that online, like I think that's very powerful because it can show that these are the things that can happen in people's lives. And Absolutely. You, and it, you shouldn't feel bad about it. It's and that's what really made human. my decision to open up more is because I started to see even the celebrities are opening up. And I was like, we should talk more about this to help other women. Like my big goal, and I'm so glad you invited me here to talk to you. My big goal is just to share my experience so that it's not so foreign, so that you actually have more information. So you can see somebody just like you who's going through these types of decisions. And like Gabrielle Union. Yeah, she had like eight miscarriages and then ended up using her uh, eggs to get embryos, and then and they have their baby through a yeah. surrogate. Yeah, I mean That's- it's just heartbreaking. So if we can avoid those heartbreaks, why not? Right? Yes. At least if you're um, empowered with the knowledge, then you can make the best choice for you because everyone's different. We don't have to compare. Exactly. Michelle Obama even opened up in her book, Becoming, about IVF um, and how she was able to, I think, get both of her book. daughters through IVF. It's a great book. <laughs> It's a great yeah. book. I mean, and who would have known that the previous, you know, president's wife would have yes. done this. So it's exactly. our first lady who seems to have it all, who looks the part, who yeah. seems so perfectly put together. I know. She's coming, you know, forward about her IVF process in hopes of helping other women. So I think that was huge of her to do that. I know. It's very big. Well, thank you so much for your journey and story. They'll have to check out your podcast, 38 and Dating. And we'll have all the links for, um, you know, connecting with you online. I love it. And thanks for being just so bold and sharing such a positive uh, story. Yeah, well, thanks for what you're doing in this space. I mean, I literally looked you up on Instagram, and I just love what you're doing and how you're helping women, you know, not feel ashamed and to learn more. So thank you for all you're doing, and please keep doing it because I yeah. hope that that's a benefit. <laughs> well, I can't keep doing it unless wonderful people like you keep sharing your stories with me. You so <laughs> awesome. Summer. Thank you so much. All right. We'll catch up again soon. Absolutely. Bye. Right, bye. bye